My name is Chiara Daraio, and I'm a professor of mechanical engineering and of applied physics uh, here at Caltech. I'm excited to share with you some of our recent research and to show you how questioning definition can open avenues for technological innovation. Let's start from concept we all understand. What is a material and a structure? And what is a robot? Concept that are, I think, clearly distinct in our mind. Material properties are determined by elemental and molecular properties. The properties of macroscopic constructions, structures like the Eiffel Tower shown here, are determined by both material properties and the structure of their assembly. 3D manufacturing makes it possible today to fabricate objects with a complex geometry, multiple functionalities, and different properties without the need for any manual assembly. Rapid prototyping methods have allowed us to create materials with a structure, not an atomic structure, but a structure at the mesoscale with features ranging from the nanometers to the meter scale blurring the boundaries between materials and structures. Computers help us design the structures with optimization methods and data-driven technologies. Here, for example, I'm showing the simulation of Dr. Chris Liu at Caltech, who created an algorithm that allows a computer to grow a structured material following rules similar to those found in biological growth of living systems. With such materials, we can tailor the elastic response of an object to our needs. We can create objects with spatially varying elastic properties. This programmability expands the potential of fabrication techniques for customizable objects and increases the functionalities of the single material used. In this example, I'm showing an armadillo, 3D printed with a single polymeric material, which has different properties in different parts of his body, like a hard shell, articulated joints and flexible limbs. We are all also familiar with how most materials expand when heated or swell when wet. In this video, I'm showing an old commercial of shrinking ink, a polymer that deforms and shrinks in the oven. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it from your elementary school projects. There exists a wealth of different polymers continuously being created by our chemistry colleagues, which like shrinking, respond to other stimuli like humidity, pH, temperature, light, magnetic fields, and electric fields. So what is robotic matter? A robot is a machine capable of carrying out a complex series of actions automatically. But what makes a robot a robot? moving parts, programmable, time-dependent responses. Can the material be the machine? We want to create materials that can do that without the need for external control systems or power supplies. This requires making structured materials which respond to stimuli with some kind of time-dependent response. Can we make materials change shape in time? For example, Imagine having three strings and imagine we could make them with a special structure such that they would self knot or interweave. To avoid the strings collision in such a complex geometry, we would need to program the material to deform at different time in different regions. A bit like performing a series of precise deformations in space. To accomplish this, we collaborated with colleagues in computer graphics to design materials that respond to heat, choosing a specific microstructure to trigger deformations in time. These are the different shaded areas in blue in the inset at the bottom of this slide. In this movie, you see the realization of the self-knotting strings, first in the computer simulation that you see above, and then in our lab shown below. All experiments are performed in a heated bath of water. We can use different material geometries, like changing the thickness of the strips in this example, to change the deformation in time when these polymer strips are immersed in a hot water bath held at constant temperature. But changing shape does not make a material a robot or a machine. Can we make a material that moves? 
Using similar concepts as the one used for the self-knotting strings, we created small swimmers that can perform a series of complex actions triggered in time. We 3D print without assembly floaters with snapping paddles, which are triggered by changes in temperature in the water. We can choose the distribution of materials so that the swimmers can move forward or backward or up or down. Here, the changes of directions can be obtained by removing some of the paddles in selected locations. We can also create solar panels that can be transported in a compact stowed configuration and deployed when heated. In this final example, we use a flat structured polymer that responds to temperature. We use hinges that exert a force when temperature is changed around them. The hinges are flat when the outside temperature is cold, but fold when it is hot. When we place this polymeric sheet on a hot plate, it first rolls up and then deploys small fins that can be used to propel it forward. The fins then retract when they move away from the hot plate in the cold air. This allows the roller to continue moving forward as long as there is a temperature difference between the plate and the air around it. Robotic matter, such as the examples I showed you before, has many potential applications, ranging from medical robots, for example, to make capsules that are deployed in the body and react to temperature changes or pH changes to release drugs, or in aerospace applications for remote autonomous explorations or in smart building technology for resilient systems that adapt to external environmental conditions. The development of new materials today is at an exciting point. The convergence of advanced manufacturing tools, data-driven design approaches, and new chemistry is opening opportunities for innovations at different scales. Caltech is at the forefront of materials discovery, thanks to its collaborative spirit and its outstanding students and postdocs involved in the research, such as the ones you see here who made what you've seen today possible. Thank you for listening.